Hello, welcome to IL2 Starmavec 1946. This is the Blinding Storm campaign. It is January 2nd, 1942. And all of this stuff. This is Ivan Balalaika Andruski. If you don't know what Balalaika is, it is a Russian musical instrument. It is sort of like a fiddle of some kind with a triangular thing at the bottom. Uh, it was a common nickname for MiG-21, but I don't know about that because it doesn't exist yet. Right now we're stuck with MiG-3. The war's first winter seemed to drag on forever. We were defending Moscow from the vultures with swastikas on their wings. Well, actually, they had them on the rudders, but pfft. And they kept on coming. We just couldn't keep them away. We could never win... Could we ever win this war? It seemed impossible, insane to even imagine ever pushing the invaders back. And one day flying over the capital like they had flown over ours. Well, we'll do it someday. I was just a, long lef a young lieutenant. Just now promoted to flight leader. I wasn't good enough for the task, but everyone else was dead. It seemed inevitable that I would join them soon enough. Flight leaders didn't last long in our right tank division. The 519th was part of the 47th Mixed Air Division. <coughs> mixed because it had everything in it. Fighters, attack, dive bombers, light bombers, heavy bombers. Our CO, Colonel Chernov, somehow managed to make sense of this whole thing. The 2nd of January had begun as usual. Rise before dawn, powder eggs, half track to the airfield. The Western Front continued their counterattack, And we were supporting them from the air. Mission briefing. My flight is ordered to patrol a small village in the 09 quadrant. The frontline village is just barely on our side of the line. We <coughs> was being used as a staging point for tank brigades. I assume they'd used to advance towards... Mosheisk. Oh god, I hope I pronounced that right. You are personally responsible, Lieutenant. Not a single bomb must fall on those tanks. Our operations officer... <coughs> Our operations officer barked... Oh god, what is this? He's him tipping on his holster. Oh, I think he's going to shoot me if we don't pull this off. <coughs> Dismissed! Takeoff was at all 700. By now we knew most of the German bases in the area. <coughs> the landmarks, and we had a pretty good idea where the bombers might come from. We just need to catch them before they begin their run. Hopefully, our measly three planes could scare them off. Objective, defend our tanks. Your flight, three big threes. Your loadout, six RS-82. Your orders, take off, all 700, heading southwest. Flight route is marked on your maps, climbing to 500 meters. Proceed to Brovsk. Borovsk, oh god, <coughs> continuing to climb to 1500 to 1700 meters, proceed to the front line, patrol over the designated village on the German side of the lines, attempting to intercept the bombers before they can reach our tanks. You will be joined by I-16s of the 627th IAP. Well, a bloody lot of good they'll do, they're kind of crap. Hint, in the aircraft customization menu, you can select the historical MiG-3 UD-519IAP.BMP. Well, let's do that right now. Um, oh god, I've forgotten which one it is already. Uh, 519th, I think it was. And this can load someday, don't worry. There we go. Oh, there we go, we get it right there. 519th. Okay, there we go. We have a winter paint scheme. We have some of these lovely little RS-82 rockets here. They are 82mm rockets, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they're actually not too different from the 82mm Soviet mortar, if I'm to be believed. Um, apparently the MiG-3 was not a terribly successful aircraft, and uh, Yekovlev and Levoshkin were the higher up design bureaus during the Great Patriotic War. However, they both managed to fall behind in the post-war with the MiG-9 and the MiG-15 entering service by the time 1950 came around. And uh, Yakovlev and Lavoshkin were building more trainers and things. And actually, <coughs> Yakovlev built a number of airliners including the Yak-40 and the Yak-42. But that's not terribly important. Let us begin now. Oh, it would look as if we are flying at night. 
Uh, that is most interesting. I don't have track IR by the way. Uh, I have it, but I haven't figured out how to make it work. So let's start up the engine. I don't know exactly what the realism settings are. I do have labels. I'm sorry, I need them rather badly. Jeez, uh, cockpit's really far back on this thing. Uh, Tickle flips. Alright, so I see what we're doing. We're just flying up the front line, protecting these columns up here. Roger. I think I'm supposed to have my lights on, but I'm not exactly certain how to do that. And also, this is war. You shouldn't have your lights on, because if you leave them on, the enemy knows where you are. Um, I need to take a second to reconfigure the controls. I will join you afterwards. Alright, I have reconfigured my control scheme and we are ready for takeoff. So let's go right ahead and do that. A uh, little tricky to see the runway like this, I must say. Oh, we are drifting over, that is not good. It's not a good example for a flight leader to set, I don't think. Uh, but here we are, we are approaching takeoff. Uh, come on, we can lift off anytime. Okay. Good show, let's get the flaps up and gear up. Can we open and close the canopy? We cannot. Okay. Then we'll just uh, bring the throttle back. Close the radiator a bit. Uh, keep prop pitch where it is. And we're pretty much good to go. Alright, where are those lazy buggers? Have they taken off yet? Alright, let's go see if those other guys have taken off yet. We probably just need to fly in a couple of circles until they do. It looks like we are taking off in early morning for this particular mission. I don't think we're rated to fly at night. I should really see if I can <gasps> find a way to turn the lights on. Okay, I think I know which way we're supposed to be turning now. <laughs> that our guys most definitely have taken off. Okay. Um, okay. Um, rejoin. There we go. On your bus. And let's head to the target. Okay, I don't think this is worth recording. I'll just come back if something interesting happens. Look at that, fascists at 12 o'clock high. Engage. Alright, folks, this is it. Attack fighters. Okay, there we go. Going after this guy here. Unfortunately, he may have a speed advantage. Oh, yes, he does. I think he's going to get away because he's out of range. Bah. Oh, we have green tracers. Well, isn't that just lovely? Oh. Fascist coming in. Uh, okay, there he is. There he is. Come on, I think we might have speed advantage on him. No, he's still going faster. Good God. We're not having best of luck today. There, at least that scared him away from whatever he was about to do. Mm. Alright. Oh, now we're starting the game on him. Now he's turning... There's probably one right behind me, but I am beyond caring at the moment. Okay. Oh no, he's getting away again! 
Багар. Stupid fascist pigs with your better airplanes. Gyuch. There he goes. Don't lose him, don't lose him! And also don't stall. Uh, here we go, I needed to turn the brightness on my monitor to be able to see this guy. Alright, he's got the winter paint scheme, obviously. It is uh, winter time last time I checked. Um, where did you go? Above. Ugh. Showing me your belly, what are you, idiot? Probably still won't be able to hit you anyway, good grief. Mm. Fire! Still awfully far away, we'll be closing. Oh, now's the time, now's the time, fire! His propeller stopped. I think he's toast, I think we got him. Oh, yes, he's bailing out. Ha <laughs> ha! Another fascist dealt with. Who knows if this is what we're supposed to be doing, but... If we're tangled up with them here, there might be another group. This could just be a diversion. And, well, we've already engaged, so there's not much we can do about it. They can shoot me later. Alright, it looks like this guy is dealt with. Are there any more? Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Ugh! Die, you fascist pig! I think he's going down. Or maybe not. He's losing fuel either way. Oh my, that was a decisive blow right there. <coughs> oh yeah, it's not an open cockpit. Uh, I could be coming in through my air conditioning now if we even have that. And good god, I wouldn't want to use it, it is cold. Just go down before I waste all my bullets on you. Yeah. Okay, let us have a look around. Are there any more fascists here? Oh, yeah, there's a couple more. Yeah, more fascists. Send of you. Go after them. We seem to be actually relatively victorious here. Oh, it looks like we're going for head-on pass with this guy. Bring it on, you probably have better guns than I do, so... Hmm. Oh, no, he's turning. He's turning. We can get him though. We've got the speed advantage. And one of my comrades is already going after him. Um, okay, here we go. Oh yes, I suppose now is good a time as I need to tell you about the control scheme. I'm using Cytec X55 and uh, Cytec rudder pedals. And like I said, no track IR, unfortunately. I'm not sure, I think you need Dark Blue World to get that to work with this, but I could be wrong. Because I know that Tailmange uses Track IR for this, but he also has Dark Blue World. Hello, Tailmange, if you're watching, you're probably not. Oh, there you are! Fascist! Fascist! Kill Fascist! Ah. Okay, I'm not seriously letting this guy get away from me, am I? Ah! Stall! Should have seen that coming. Oh dear. 
Come on, I've got you now. Got you under my thumb. Or at least I thought I did. Got you under my trigger finger anyway. Oh, there we go, that's got him. Well, if we get three victories on this mission, that's pretty impressive. There he goes. Uh oh, there we go. Are there any more fascists here? I think I have external views turned off because none of my buttons which would normally take me to external views are working. But that's okay. I want this to be reasonably realistic with, except for the labels. I kept the labels on because... Well, actually, what I wish this did, I wish it did what Rise of Flight did, where it has the little pointers when they're out of your field of view. Because that's good compensation for not having track IR because you also because you get a decent idea of where they are. But this doesn't really do that unless you go into the wonky doodle view. Ah! Sorry about that. I uh, thought I was going into wonky doodle view, but it just opened the help page. I don't know if that messed up the recording or not. I really hope it did. I think this is the last fascist that is here. Oh, they've drawn us way off course, though. Okay, I'm moving. I'm taking my group back. Supposed to be a radio communication page. What is this? Maybe my radio's been hit. Oh well. I think they'll still follow me. Yes, they are. So we will take them back to this area we were where we were supposed to engage them up at the front. And then the one bloke bloke. That is strange to say with my stereotypical Russian accent. Oh, the I sixteens are going after him, he'll probably kill them both, but uh, we have more important matters to contend to. Their sacrifice will not be in vain. Well, it will if we lose these tanks, because it would appear that these guys were a diversion to keep us out of the way. As indeed, there are more fascists over there. I'm seeing their blue labels coming up now. Because it works a little bit weird here. It's the allies have red labels, the access have blue labels. It's uh, nothing to do with friends and enemies in this particular case. There might be a setting to change that, but I don't know what it is. It might actually be on the installation, but uh, I don't rightly know for completely entirely certain. My people are definitely following me, right? I don't think we need to worry about engine overheat because it's just so cold. And in fact, this would be a good day for flying because airplanes do get better performance out of their engines when it's cold because they're not overheating all the time. On the other hand, the best time for gliding is when it's really, really long, because then you get the most thermal activity. Your tow plane will get crappy performance unless you use a winch, which is a lot of fun. Uh, I shall tell you about the gliding on winch later. <laughs> I've done it a couple times. Uh, Alright, we've got BF-110s here. They have rear gunners, so we got to be a little careful. Um, oh, yep. Here comes one now. Okay, let's go after these fascists. Because Comrade Stalin says they are bad. And when war was declared, when Germany invaded Soviet Union, Stalin kind of got very drunk and went and hid under his bed, but uh, no one's supposed to know about that. Uh, holy crap. Okay. Okay, fascists. Oh, now he's losing fuel, but we're running out of bullets. Ah, and we've been hit! We've been hit! Stupid gunner. Kill him! Kill him! Kill the gunner! Or hit the engine. Oh god, I'm out of here! Oh dear, we are trailing black smoke. Oh god! Oh god, oh god! Fail! 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 Oh god, what have I done? I think my... Oh dear, what have I done? What have I done? Oh, there we go. Bailing out. Oh, I hope we're on our side of the line. Nope, we're not. And I'm probably going to squidge. Ugh! Okay, we failed first mission, unfortunately. But I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> Are you? <coughs> but I am not doing this. We got two and a half victories. Uh, I will be reflying this mission in next episode but i think this one is long enough as it is i'm not doing this so that if i die it's over because that would end the series awfully quickly as we just found out so next video i will be trying it again 